I think we're fortunate here to have a past associate. I mean, if you look at everywhere else in our area, that that's not happening. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, um, as a matter of fact, we're not gaining really any additional people or losing priests in this area. Um, I think St. Stephen's getting a senior associate, which is great. Of course, that would be more problems than it's worth with the who that may be. Love you on the senior Rito. Great. Um, we'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, I mean, um, it's, I think it's going to be a struggle. I think one thing, too, is kind of interesting, and we are talking about this the other day, is uh, the way the deanery is going to be set up. Because, you know, we had the South City Deanery, which no longer exists. Now we're in a deanery. We're, we're down to two deaneries in this what we call Vicariate. The Vicariate primarily is just basically everything within the two seven um, but there's two deaneries, the, the North Deanery, or what are they called? Deanery 1 and Deanery 2. And deaner, we're in Deanery 1, which is the South one. And that, that, that whole, uh, I think this might have some change too over time because if you look at this area, the purpose of a deanery 
it's kind of the same thing as ascended. Is there kind of directed pastorally to particular people that are kind of have certain common um, issues going on, right? Yeah. So directing that towards those type of things. And uh, you have to tell me where the similarity is between, let's say, Clement of Rome and uh, St. Louis of Paul. I don't see much similarity there. So how are we going to pass really approach those two people as a as a as a deanery to do that? Um, we'll have to see. I don't know. Um, maybe there might be an opportunity to have more deaneries. Um, I'm just praising God and Thanksgiving that I was not elected to the priest personnel board. So that's always a good news. Uh, that could have been more, more disastrous. Than, really good. Yeah. Well, well, I think I think it's a little bit now. It's probably a little bit easier than it was before. Because they've already made these changes. I saw one, one, one priest, vice priest, told me, it's like, yeah, but if you're on the board now, you have to deal with all the complaints. <laughs> it's like, yeah, probably true. Um, so. Well, there is a um, uh, Facebook page called the Archdiocese. Um, uh, they, don't, they don't call it um, priest swap debacle. But oh, that's the way people approach it. It's not called the unofficial or chassis and uh, discussion board, is it? I don't know what it's called, but one person posted what's a good three letter name for a baby. And then people have all kinds of complaints. And then they and then there are people chastising those who have complaints. <laughs> And then there are people just put up a chunk of prayer. Sure. And, you know, it, and then there's the occasional person that said, I thought we were supposed to talk about, and I even said, you know, let's talk about our feelings. Let's talk, you know, if you have something to say, say it with sincerity. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so I'm going to that, but I thought it would be. See, that, that's kind of one of the reasons I'm on social media and all, because you get this. Somebody, yeah, and, 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 so many, so many, well, that's the thing. So well, well, many, well, many, true, but I think a lot of these things are set up for like, yeah, that, that's a perfect example. Mm -hmm. Except for a particular purpose that maybe actually be good and genuine, and then turns into something not what it really was set up for. So, I'm good with that. Just you know, if I want well, to talk to people, I'll call them, I'll text them. You put out some great political stuff. Sure. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's always, that's always a good time, right? Yeah, that's always a great you know, discussion. I have, what you do is you, well, you should, you don't know, <laughs> but I'm going to tell but you curate your board. Sure. So, or your, your feed. Mm -hmm. So you get stuff 
really great. You know, uh, science stuff, animal stuff, and bird. And, um, Dogs I do Bishop, I see Bishop Barron's on, uh, yeah, they do go like that. Right? Somebody is going to inspire you to change. So. Sorry, sorry, it's Christine. There's nothing that anyone can say. I've, I've, been, I've been so ingrained with mystic theology. It's not going to happen. I Sorry. Said, we're we're finished with them. My Gracie and I are going to go directly to St. Francis. I mean, do you think there's St. Francis standing there and there are no words? Yes. Here's there no, yes. No. Okay. Then, yes, you are. You are going to bring your beloved dog cat with you to heaven. I. That's why I've always said. I've oh, always yeah. said that. He's going to be within me. Wow. <laughs> My dog. The fulfillment of that cuteness is going to be with you in heaven. Wow. Uh, I don't give any appreciation. I'm sure really well. Sure really well. But um, if I there's just, I mean, you can really find great stuff. And Ignore everybody else's mediocre stuff. But um, anyway, uh, it, it's time to me. Yeah, no, no, well, and tell you the truth, I did have, I did have a Facebook page for a little while when it, like, maybe, maybe shortly after it came out. And yeah, it, it became it became a huge time suck. Mm -hmm. And what I realized was the same people I was talking to on that were the same people I was talking to on the phone and text. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, okay, yeah, great. I got to maybe see the page of this person I knew in grade school I haven't seen in 20 years. That's awesome. But so, I mean, it's, yeah. it's like, uh, okay, what does it really mean? You also follow every art museum. Yeah. In the world. Right. Uh -huh. But that's what I'm saying. I mean, talking about time suck. Like, I actually, you know, that's the thing. So, yeah, I, 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 I may sit off for about a year, maybe two years, and finally just got off it. Because it was like, this is not, this is this really no benefit to me at all. And, you know, learning stuff, all kinds of stuff. But yeah. you, you have to have time. Yeah. Now, I will say, I'm going to turn my TV on in two years. And I used to watch a lot of TV. And um, I don't miss it because when I go home, I'm thinking about what I'm going to look up. Work. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Sermons, Sunday, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I say, there's definitely advantages, I think. I mean, but it, like, plus, all this comes down to the way it's used and how it's being used. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah, I mean, it can be very beneficial. I'm not saying it 
thinking it won't be. I'm just saying that like, me personally, I'm, I'm, I think of the temperament and of the, the personality that it can become very addicting for me. And I'd rather not do that. Because I mean, if you don't need to get a hold of me, they can. I've got email, I've got phone, I've got, you know, you can text me, you can call me, I'm here. But my volunteer jobs are on there and things. Mm -hmm. And, but again, I have time and I've curated a way. Yeah. And, um, but it is the time that's up. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much um, good stuff on here. Now, I had, before my phone went bad, I had a good thing to the day thing. Oh. I gave you a little one minute explanation and then a long written explanation. Okay. I can't find that. I found a different one. The Franciscan? Because I know Francis, uh, the Franciscans have a state of the day. But it would pop up. Yeah. It wasn't on Facebook. It would pop up on yeah. uh, email. Right. But, yeah, I really like to kind of pair with that because sometimes I can't even understand the saint's name, but yeah. I haven't seen it in print. Yeah, I didn't realize what was the 12th last week. Um, was the piece of St. Brown? I didn't know that. Yeah. You know, because a lot of it depends on the ordo, because in the ordo, see, a lot of those are dependent on the region you're in. Yeah. So the bishops kind of choose those, right? Yeah. That's so awesome. yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I know. I mean, so a lot, a lot of it comes down to what kind of cult following is there with these people. Things you know, so for instance, um, well, this actually has happened recently, but because we have Saint Kateri uh, Tekawitha on the 14th of July, mm -hmm. poor Camillus got kind of left out every year, and so they finally decided to put him on the 18th. Oh. And so, here in the United States. Uh, well, I guess the 14th is theory no matter what, but certain certain dioceses probably still celebrate Camilla on Camilla's on the 14th because, well, Kateri, I mean, you're in Japan, when do you hear about Kateri? Yeah. So it kind of depends, right, on what on where you are. Um, and every yeah, there's really every day is a saint associated with it typically, yeah. but you don't always celebrate that in liturgy because it depends on the particular region. Well, on this one, it has um, you have to go to July, and it'll have. A saint. Sometimes it's two saints. Mm -hmm. But then there are days where there's a whole oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. In fact, I was looking at Saint Hedwig. Mm -hmm. And she was the queen of yeah. Poland. Yeah. She shares with um... Oh, there is. She's, she's the 16th of, of October. Oh, okay. And she said I think she shares that with Mark or Scotland. Is that right? no? Okay, well then maybe I gave you the wrong name. 
because um, it, I mean, there were a good dozen, and I picked her out. The only reason I know this is because, and then, well, it also depends on trying to the old calendar and the new calendar. Yeah. So there's yeah, a difference there, too. The only reason I know that one is because my mother's uh, birthday is on that day. Uh, I think it's October. It could be different. Oh, they say That's pretty good, too. That's one I use. Yeah. I use that for like Yeah. Well, I mean, it can be, be very complicated because I mean, yeah, you could have multiple things. Like, for instance, uh, February 14th. Who's that saying? February 14th is Valentine? No. It is, but we don't celebrate him anymore on the calendar. Uh, I mean, you know why? Why? It was my dog Lucy's birthday. Sure it was. Sure it was. <laughs> well, then you should, you should, you should be uh, more. Uh, I I can't go without bothering. You should be December 14th then, uh, or December 13th. Who is uh, the 14th? Uh, Cyril Methodius. Cyril. Cyr Saint Cyril and Methodius. They were brothers. And they were, they were uh, uh, the apostles of the Slavic people. And that they were so Saint Valentine is still a saint, sure. But we started celebrating so in the thirties in the late sixties, no one really knew. Um so yeah, the February fourteenth every day, you know, let's see, so it's not Saint Valentine being celebrated, unless you're maybe in LA. But since from Methodius. And the reason behind that is not that there isn't a Saint Valentine, there is, but the problem is there were so many Valentines. It was hard to determine which one you were talking about. Because mm -hmm. there were actually some good Valentines, like the bishop who was in prison and wrote love letters or also, a bishop who, who was married secretly, marrying couples, blah, 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 during the time of persecution. But there's also some really bad times. And so it's like, wait a minute, which one are we talking about here? Bad St. Valentine? Not St. Valentine, oh, but, but, but when you say like St. Valentine, you're like, wait a minute, that guy was a saint? I don't know where you're from. It's like, I got this Right, then whatever this whole thing is ridiculous. So they decided to um, take him off the cannon, even though he's still a saint. But we celebrated a different person today. Now, in the morning, hopefully, I'm there on time. Mm -hmm. Oh, yesterday I'm trying to turn my phone off. Good. Um, like something. Well, you know what my phone does? It updates all the time. Yeah. So it reconfigures how you turn it off. Uh -huh. So it looked like it was going to ring, even though I had under that stir. So I'm uh, some but I don't know what now I lost my point. Oh, but I'm trying to read the the uh, entrance saying font. Oh, yeah. They're always different. 
Yeah, and there is so. <laughs> yeah. So because we usually, unless there's okay, so we, when we talk about in the liturgy, we have um, this is for liturgy hours or for the mass. We have commons and proffers, right? So. Like today for St. Camillus de Lely, there's a proper collet, right? So there's a proper prayer. But everything else comes to what they call the common. In this case, the common of those of uh, holy men who work for the underprivileged. And so if you were sure to the common, where this all this stuff is for the interest and upon there's two options. Well, sometimes it shows it in the great, yeah, book, right, but yeah, so sometimes just the fact that I choose the one that wasn't there, right. Sometimes, like, I get lucky and I choose the one that is there, right? Well, when I read it, I say, well, here's the entrance, entrance, right. and upon, or whatever. I knew I, I knew I'd get it wrong whenever no, no, no one else repeats it. It's like, okay, great. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so we keep on going. Um, but sometimes there actually are proper. So, like for instance, like uh, what was the last proper we had? Probably um, oh, Saint Benedict, right? So he has all the propers. So everything comes from the same page. It's a proper. It's proper. Divine's a proper. Collect is proper. Prayer of the gifts. Proper prayer for communion and proper communion. Everything is the same. Um, and even, even the preface is, is determined. So it has to be the preface of either, well, you know, the preface of pastors, right? So you have to use those regardless. Mm -hmm. um, some days, though, it's like, so, if, like, for instance, tomorrow, even though it's the Wednesday of the 15th week of ordinary time, there's going to be, you use everything from the Sunday, right? So, the, the head fund, the college, everything's coming from the Sunday. But, also in the order, they have mass suggestions. And they, because these are suggestions in the prayers that may coincide somewhat with the readings. Mm -hmm. Or they have other suggestions, like for instance, tomorrow you could pray, you could celebrate Mass of the Holy Spirit. Are you gonna give us a little cheat? No. So we'll know. You're not. <laughs> Yeah, figure it out. So, but for Mass the Holy Spirit, there's a role proper too. So they come from that particular page in the in the in the missal that may not necessarily be in your handbooks because, well, hey, here in St. Louis we pray Mass Holy Spirit, but somewhere else maybe they don't do that. So I like to keep it. Just pay attention. I like to keep it on your toes. I like to keep it going there. You know, whatever you got it. No, but that's not that's not done intentionally. Just because, like, well, I just chose the wrong one, I guess. Yeah. And yeah, so that's how it kind of works. Yeah, and then on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're not always hearing the same um, um, song. Okay. 
so not necessarily. So sometimes the psalms could be could be used differently. So so the only requirement for the responsory is that you can't have a responsory. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same psalm. Now, the readings you have to use the same. You have to use the first reading, the oh, second yeah. reading. Yeah. The gospel, of course. Um, without, well, you could be dispensed from that. So, like, if I'm a bishop and say, you know, you know, Excellency, I really want to pray this, this, uh, Use these this reading this weekend. All right, I that his prudent question would be why. <laughs> I'll be like, wow. Well, yeah, exactly. It's a continuous. It's continuous lecture. Uh, there for a reason. You know, so why do you want to do something different? Which is a valid question. I had a good reason to do that, right? Yeah. I can't just do willy nilly. Um, but yeah, I mean that could happen. Uh, but sometimes maybe, uh, uh, yeah, different song used, or sometimes just like maybe even a uh, not necessarily a, uh, a song, but even a canticle. That may be uh, more conducive, or could it also be just a fact of, well, my cancer is not that experienced, and I know if I try to do this with them, that would be difficult. So let's just do something you can do, and everyone else can do it too. Yeah. yeah. It's. But the five, so I will say though, sometimes it also depends on which banks you go to. Um, it was funny, I had mass one time, and I think three different places one Sunday. And each one of them had a different responsory. And I was like, okay. And I went, it was fine. <laughs> so the readings are all the same, but they're not. Like, all right. Great. Yeah. So kind of this week was the. Um, uh, you're not worthy of me. You don't hate your parents and your children. Well, was that, that was yesterday, right? That was gospel yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's come around several times. Yeah. I kind of thought, well, this shows how much I don't know. I thought it pretty much went through 80% of the Bible over three years. But this was getting a lot of play. Well, it's more than that. You, you, get, you get pretty much all, except for the, the, the prophet Obadiah. For some reason, you get every reading, every 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 page within three years. Okay. Oh, sorry. And so this one, there's a little extra time. Yeah, I mean, we are because you think of think of it this way. Uh, the week, the weekly readings are on a two-year cycle, while the Sunday readings are on a three-year cycle. Uh, okay. So yeah, you're going to have probably so like every other year on this day. Well, actually, the funny thing about that, you're going to get a different first reading. 
but the gospels are going to be the same for the 15th, the Wednesday, the 15th week of ordinary time. Okay. No matter what. You're going to hear that gospel no matter what on that day. Okay. The gospel at Mass we rotate through. And so sometimes it corresponds where, hey, you just heard this gospel on Sunday a week, week ago. Yeah, well, it's just the way the cycle kind of slips yeah. up. Yeah. Um, Can you say the, the difference of the cycle for the Sunday? Yeah. So the week, the weekday cycle, the weekday schedule, the masses every year it rotates between one and two cycle. But that's just for the first three in the song. So if you were to come to let's say, so today today being um, well the readings for, for the Tuesday of the fifteenth week of ordinary time. Right. Even though it's St. Camilla's, there's no proper readings for this. Day. But so if you were to come here next year on the two, second Tuesday, the 15th Sunday, or, or 15th Tuesday, ordinary time, you would hear a different first reading, but the same gospel. If you were to come to on Sundays, so the 15th Sunday in time has three different readings three years in a row. So the Sundays are in a three year cycle, while the weekdays are in a two year cycle. So it's just kind of way, and then the, the 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 cycles really correspond more to um, the synoptic gospels, so Matthew, Mark, Luke. Your A's Matthew, your B's Mark, and then your C is Luke. Although Mark is supplemented because it's so short with uh, John chapter six every year. I see. Yeah. Sure. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. Just especially. That's also that's also a struggle as a preacher because you know you're talking about the Eucharist five years, five, which also is uh, bad, but also, well, how how many different ways can I say this is the Eucharist? All right. So. Now, I always find it interesting that the, you know, John chapter 6 takes it, Jesus kind of leads the disciples deeper and deeper in what he's actually saying. And each, each reading every week kind of has a different aspect of that. Mm -hmm. But then the, the problem there is, okay, the, the next your B that comes up now what are we talking about because <laughs> you know I've kind of more approached those topics oh. it, it, it can be very um, challenging right like uh, Joel and Tobit and uh, yeah Tobit comes up every once in a while uh, actually, we just got kind of Tobit a while back in the weekly mass. Yeah. Um, Joel comes up usually, I think he comes up usually around Advent. Uh, yeah, the only, the only, the only uh, prophet that's never actually touched in the Bible is Obadiah. I don't know why. Right. That's how it goes. Yeah. So I'm going to read over the and I'll read all the Bible. Well, these names made me wonder. Um, I don't know who I was listening to talking about 
billion of angels. So everyone has their own, and then they're retired. I mean, they're not titles. I didn't retire. Well, I'm retired, Angel. I, 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 I got them. I'm done. you like how I feel. Yeah. You know what he did with his angels? He had apparently, you know, his, his physicality was really shot. Mm -hmm. And he had. Helpers care of him. One of them always, always overslept. Mm -hmm. So he would send his guardian angels to lay him up. That could work. Now, you know, this is what I'm talking Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, that, that maybe. So it's, I think it's kind of fascinating. There was a there was a uh, spiritual director uh, every every summer up in Omaha, Nebraska. They have this kind of uh, formation summer for seminarians. They call it the Institute of Priestly Formation. And there's one spiritual director that is from Omaha that some of the Omaha guys really do well. And uh, I remember the story that one of the one of the current priests up there was talking about this guy. He's like, yeah, you know, we were driving this guy's house and um, we brought this priest with us and we we're having dinner there. And, um, but the priest was, you know, we've had the priest in the sitting room all talking. It's like, oh, Father, we're ready to go to dinner. like, okay, well, um, I summoned down a seraphim <laughs> to uh, guard the door. And uh, he's beautiful. He's 12 feet tall. Uh, he's going to be there for a turn. So, more should be covered. Guys like, oh, okay. <laughs> All right, well, let's, we got dinner now. So, it was the, the funny thing about that is, like, well, did he? I mean, you never really know. I mean, but because here's the other thing, too. Well, do do human beings have authority to actually command well, like beings? You can ask them. Sure. You I know, think that, that, that's fair. That's fair. Things to say. Ignoring you. Yeah, but you know. say you could say I summoned a seraphim. Really? Okay. Cool. I. Sure, maybe. I guess you could. What can I do with a well put seraphim in my house? I have room. That's the other thing, too. Is there a attorney? Well, oh, great. What, what happens if this building is knocked down? I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. I guess so. Maybe it will. I guess it will. But that, that's, that was just an interesting discussion. Just, just, yeah. so, oh, maybe, maybe. I mean, he had a sense of humor, but also he was, very, he was a very mystical guy. He had a reputation of being that way. Like there was nothing short to tell us that he was back in the back seat of the car in the same trip. They were taking him back to the rectory. And uh, he pulled a little pulley water out of his uh his you know of his pocket. So, you know, I make the devil drink this every morning. He's literally like 
Sorry, Father. <laughs> Thank you, I guess. It was like, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, it ended with this, like, he hates it. But I'm sure it sure does. Sure it does. Sure it does. I mean, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's but you know, I think it's some people that have these mystical experiences. I think it happens more often than, than maybe people realize. Well, um, we have someone among us Saturday morning who does. And but very practical things. Um, Mitch made a mantilla mm -hmm. for our little Maria and Squilla. The Holy Spirit told her to put home in it so it would blow up her head. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, well, yeah, I, I think yeah, that's yeah, true. I mean, sometimes it can be a mystical experience, these big, profound things that happen that we have no explanation of. And, you know, I, I witnesses my senses, but I can't explain what happened. Those are mystical experiences. So, All day, every day. Yeah, right. It's like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. That's, that's in line with the reasons. That's that would be God. That makes sense, right? Yeah. I'm going to take my brother's pants. Uh -huh. And I've got this homeless guy. We call Drew Gerard, uh -huh. who can't keep his pants up, and I can't find standards for him. Okay. So I'm going to buy heavy elastic and probably the Holy Spirit is going to tell me it hurts. So, in all these perfect, perfect, great, so, wonderful. Oh, anyway, I, I just don't, I just don't really get a lot of that. Well, I know, yeah, where, where, well, here's that, there's something interesting about that, too, like, I never thought, I could be one that would actually be kind of enthralled with contemplative prayer. You know, my, my growing up, it was mostly road prayers, maybe meditative every once in a while, but that was more kind of, I found that was more in line with like my work. Like it was funny, every time I was like asking God, like, I don't want to do with this, he like, and he gives me like, oh, here, here, do this. Oh, great. But contemplative, I was like, that's foreign to me. I don't know. What are you talking about? I don't even know what that means. But I started reading up in the subject, and I read stuff. And, but even as reading, like, I really like the seven story mansions and like these things like Teresa and John the Cross. And, like, Maybe, I don't know. I mean, I, don't, I mean, I can see myself somewhere in there, but I don't think I've ever been up to that point where it's like the seventh mansion or the seventh mountain top, whatever. Um, even reading like stuff like from Jesuits, like, I read Ignatius. One thing I preached by Ignatius was that he's very practical. And I think what's what's funny about all these different schools of spirituality in the church is that they're all kind of saying the same thing using different language, which is true. I think sometimes you talk about meditation and some 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 schools say that it's actually contemplation and vice versa. Fine. It was 
that's how I went on that, that, that uh, I would say on my eight day retreat that I actually realized like, oh, this is something that actually is very possible. And it really wasn't until like about well, thirty days that I actually experienced it by myself. And it does kind of freak you out a little bit because if you're not used to it, it's like I don't know, am I going crazy? I think I'm going nuts here. I think there's something happening here where it's not it's not normal. But then that's why spiritual direction is so important. Especially in those retreats, because they can tell you, oh no, that's, that's what you want to do. This what you want to happen. Because oh. it gives you like comfort, like, oh, okay, good, I'm on the right track. Good. And I think the most profound one that I really freaked out on was when I was contemplating, I don't know if I talked about this before, when I was contemplating hell. Oh, you said you that in bed screen or something. Well, it was it was so the way the, the retreat is kind of directed is you have like five to six holy hours you have prayer every day. Or four to six, whatever. And for these particular ones, they have specific times of the day that they wanted you to pray these hours. Mm-hmm. And um, so one of those hours will be in the dead of night. And we should like get up in the middle of the night and go, you know, pray within the chapel outside, wherever you feel comfortable. You do it in your room. Why well, was the chapel? I think God, I did, um, because all through those contemplations, I was, you're you're putting yourself actually in hell, and you're experiencing what hell is like, like the smell and the feel, and what what you see, and it was kind of profound because like. These are things that, like I've never thought about or even kind of perceived, and you're kind of having these experiences where it's like, oh wow, that's amazing, but also, oh boy. And a lot of it was directed toward around the seven deadly sins. And you see kind of what I saw in these in these kind of uh, contemplations or these these levels where these seven deadly sins come into play with each other and they're causing pain towards each other right so the, so in other words um you have kind of these it's kind of almost a dante like um, atmosphere we have these different levels where these people experience these different sins or engraving these mortal sins are being punished through them. And it's just very profound. about that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's and this thing I've never seen. I've never seen these things before. Right. So I mean, this yeah. is not an experience, but so I'm like, okay, I've read Dante's Inferno, but it's also like, but even in that, it's, it's different. I can't necessarily explain it. But it wasn't until that last contemplation. So during this whole time, I was being guided through, and I assumed. It was Jesus, or it was, you know, maybe my guardian angel or someone that was helpful. Until my very last contemplation, I realized the person that was guiding me through this was not Jesus or 
whoever I thought it was. And at that moment, I found myself saying, Lord, help me. And then Jesus appeared. Because this person was never in my visual. So you kind of panicked and you thought maybe you're stuck there? Well, I kind of panicked because I was like, what does that mean for my spiritual life? Like, I, it's almost like, it was, I, 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 I think maybe it equated to like, let's say, um, <laughs> Maybe the best way to explain this is like uh, Star Wars. So you know, like when um, when Luke Skywalker goes to that tree and you're just like, mm, you're not going to use your weapons there. Don't worry about it, right? And he experiences Darth Vader. Oh no, I think you ever see Star Wars? Oh. Oh, Christine, you disappoint. Well, anyway, so anyway, there's a scene in what they call Return of the Jedi, which is the last of the first three. Right? And there's a scene where, uh, you know, Luke has been training with Yoda this entire time and learning the Jedi, you know, whatever, and learning about the good, the good side of the Force. And there's a moment where uh, he notices this sense of something come from this wooded area. And he kind of was like, was like, oh, there's something over there. And he was like, mm, kind of like indifferent, you know. And he's like, uh, and he starts to go over there because he's like, you know, his blaster is like, you know, it says, uh, you don't need your weapons or your weapons you will not need. Uh, you know, how we all saw. So he's like, whatever, I'm taking my saber. He goes in there and he experiences Darth Vader. Right? And so he's fighting Darth Vader and he chops off Darth Vader's head and, and it, it, realized, it appears that it was him. Right. Yeah. And so I guess I guess for me it was sort of like <laughs> there's like kind of this, this this kind of uh realization by Luke that he was being drawn to the dark side in some way. Right. And it's like why did that happen? I was drawn to this in some way, in some fashion. And then it doesn't seem right because I'm studying and learning and growing in this other way. And I guess that's kind of how I felt. I was like, man, why was I? So they started thinking, was this all a lie? Was this all kind of meant to maybe misdirect me or mis and so that's the first stretch comes in place you bring the stems like here's my experience what what, what does this mean mm -hmm. and they're like oh yeah well you know, there could be a spiritual warfare there but that doesn't mean that could also be the fact that you you are a sinner <laughs> just like everybody else and but that's also, it's also good to were able to recognize that. Yeah. That's the good. That's the good. You have to bring the fruit. You have to get to kind of glean from this. Like, oh, okay. I missed the original Star Wars. Okay. Twenty fifth anniversary. Okay. I got my talk into it. Wonderful. Because I had just done the yes training, so I was training. <laughs> and uh, it's it, that's the one with the little plastic face things flying across. The yeah, yeah, it's all models. On, yeah, right. Yeah. On fishing line. Yeah. Yeah. But for that time, that was amazing. I mean, that was a very sci-fi. That was great stuff. Yeah, you 
or what? Seven. I was even born when the first one came out. When the, the time Jedi came out, I think it was I was like seven. So yeah, but I remember seeing that. I didn't see it in theaters, but yeah, it was good. I liked it. I remember when it came out. It was the early eighties. Well, the first one came out in seventy seven. Okay. The second one I think came out in like eighty four. And the third one came out like so eighty six. Yeah. And that's how much I remember. Wonderful. There you go. Great. Right. Perfect. Uh, well, uh, what I was thinking with these names, you know, I was listening to this thing on Angel. So, how many? Billions of people have there been so far, and they've all had their own individual angel with their own individual names. And these names in the Bible are pretty weird. What in the world could all those angels be named? Because I imagine they don't have a they're not half named John and the other half named. Well, I imagine their names yeah. all would, would have. Well, they're all men. They're all, no, that's not. No, they're not gendered at all. Yeah, they're, not, they're spiritual beings, so yeah. Um, But I imagine their names would have been with L. Because, um, well, I mean, this could just be for the archangels, too. Who knows? But, like, when you think of all the different choirs, you know, the powers, principalities, uh, virtues. So the virtues have their own names, but these are also human understanding names. So their angelic names could be hidden, too. Probably know, but there are angels we know. They're all names and with L because L always means of God, right? Yeah. So, um, and a lot of these are based on translation, like through the years too. So, the true name might be different. Um, it's interesting. To that point, I, I just we just watched again as a fraternity group on Friday the uh, the Ferris movie. Have you ever heard of this movie? Brilliant movie. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a lot of play, and it's unfortunate because it's really well done. But the fact that it was nefarious, and the, the premise of this movie is that there's a um, sky on death row in Oklahoma, and uh, he claims to be possessed by a demon. And state law dictates, and I'm sure this is actually true or not, but I mean, it's, a good, it's a good premise for the, for the story. Uh, that state law dictates that uh, someone on death row, if they can't go through execution, they're deemed insane. Yeah. Yeah. And so this, this uh, oh, right, so this, they ask the psychiatrist to come in, who is an atheist, to determine if this person actually is sane or not. That's the only thing he's trying to decide. And so the whole movie is this conversation between this, this person who's possessed and the psychiatrist. And it's brilliant how they kind of, the actor that played the convict was amazing. Because he was able to kind of go in and out of being this 
person that's not you know possessed, but also like because sometimes the actual guy would come out, he let the guy come out to actually speak. It was brilliantly active. And the same next to the guy, or I knew I remember I saw him once in um a movie called Boondock Saints. He's in the same same actor was in that movie. He was also good in that too, but that was more of a really much more violent. But I advise anyone to go see this because part of the part of the um, the exercise is that this this uh, the psychiatrist is trying to figure out what you know the guy's name is, you know. And so uh, the demon says, "Well, probably the best translation in English would be nefarious, or really more precisely, well, one who is nefarious." Uh, and this because my name has been spoken for thirty five hundred years in the Phoenician dialect. You wouldn't even know. <laughs> it's like, like, one of these things, like okay. He was like speaking of angels, like what kind of the same way. Um, but it was it was it was really I really advise people to go see it. It really was amazing. They actually they actually say uh, if you ever read the Screw Tape letters by C. S. Lewis, and I'd probably read that first. Because it is kind of a modern day screw tape letters. It was pretty fascinating. And the screw tape letters, the whole premise of that book is is kind of showing how Satan and the devil kind of work not only individuals but also society in general. And so that's kind of what this was about. What? Denomination was C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis is Anglican. But his, okay, because yeah. Catholic theologians, yeah. priests, and everybody. Well, the reason, the reason is because his best friend, the one actually got him to for, Christianity was Jared Tolkien. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so it was said that actually, actually, see, this was about this close to becoming Catholic. If you read his later writings, it was actually more Catholic than it really was Anglican. And there was a thought that if you would have lived a little bit longer, you probably want to convert it oh. to false. So it's, it's kind of funny that since uh, uh, Blessed uh, St. John Henry Newman, there's been a lot of people following that path. That from atheist to Anglican, and then they kind of Start reading up on on a, uh, Henry Newman, then become Catholic. As a matter of fact, there's a people people um, I've been working with that have the same experience, as well as a, a, a really prominent professor at seminary who kind of went the same route. He was. Um, I've talked about him before. He's a brilliant man uh, and very charitable guy. But he started very atheistic. He was basically raised as a secular Jew. Um, he and his wife got married and he had, they had a first son. And that kind of started getting, contemplating like, the existence of God. And so he found himself in the end. Church. And then he was, once she started, started checking out the history of the English church, realized, wait a minute, 
<laughs> you guys came from this one. So he converted classes and he's been teaching the Saturday now for about, boy, I would say about 15 years now at least. Wow. So, yeah. Really good guy. His son actually is teaching there now, too, which is kind of amazing. Um, the one that actually brought home by his conversion. So, it's even more <laughs> fascinating. So, yeah, this is pretty good. Yeah, those stories are always on. I think they're also so great. Yeah. Well, I am I'm asking my. Um... Well, I work in a, a garden. Yeah. As a volunteer. Yep. Mm -hmm. I grow mm -hmm. It's on my transgender mm -hmm. person. Who I pray like crazy for. Yeah. And so there are a lot yeah, a lot of like-minded sure. people, sure. Yeah. and um, you know, I've been I've been thinking a lot about it, and I just have to, and I can't say like. Christ, I can't say that. Yeah, I just have to be open to love anybody who comes yeah. my way. Good. Yeah, and they're so good. Yeah, and uh, that's what that's one thing that I think I'm really happy you're there, Christine. So I think that, oh. that's that's I mean, you know. Like, I think we talked about this before. A lot of this, a lot of this kind of discussion and these things, kind of this growth, kind of happens through relationship, right? And so it's good to establish a relationship first to kind of you know before you actually start even thinking about like what God wants for you, what what you know where He's leading you. Well, and I'm also dealing with people who, after many years of hatred for themselves, mm -hmm. alcoholism, yeah. drug abuse, yeah. now they're living their authentic life. Yeah. And they're marginalized. And my church doesn't, you know, I would love for the Catholic Church. I even told a friend of mine, all of the priests mm -hmm. who are at uh Parish is called St. Joseph in town. It's called St. Joseph. And their name is Joseph. They should form a group to be the world's experts on this. And you know Jordan Peterson? Mm -hmm. He's a little bit of a Because he's talking. <laughs> but he's interviewing a person, a woman, who transitioned. Yeah. And then came back. Yep. Did you see that? I did. Okay. So as he's going through, well, did your therapist explain this to you? And it brings up engineers. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, in development, and she felt women were voluptuous. 
and she's like a stick figure. Mm -hmm. So she didn't figure like she would fit. Mm -hmm. But he said, girls typically, as they're growing older, are people oriented and boys are thing oriented. Right. Mm -hmm. And can you use engineering mm -hmm. as not materialistic, but but when you listen to him go through all of this, and this is happening in a young person's right. mind, right. God's got to understand. Oh, sure. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think. I think the, the, the going understanding of this from us, not only just a theological, but also from a psychological standpoint, mm -hmm. is that there's something going on that is causing this, for lack of a better word, disorder, mm -hmm. right, that's happening. And whether it's emotional, whether it's psychological, that maybe develop, and I think that the what what we're looking at is you know a good a therapist that's worth their salt, right? What necessarily can do these feelings or these irrationalities that are causing leading to mutilation and to this is for you. Part of that is understanding what the root of that may be. And that the problem is, I think it really takes time. Like when, when certain people come to me, um, whether it's through pastoral formation or through spiritual direction, and I ask, you know, they talk about maybe psychological issues they're dealing with or whatever. My first question is, are you seeing a therapist? Right. The answer is that. Yes. Okay. The second question is what is what is what kind of therapy are you experiencing with this therapist? If the next thing out of their mouth is, oh, they give me drugs and they they want they they, they affirm what I'm saying what I'm the same. My my next answer to I think maybe it's time to get a new therapist. All right. And maybe I have some reference here that I can maybe you know show you. Because I think a lot of times, and I'm not sure if this is really necessarily so you know subconsciously or even consciously doing it. I think there's such a just an agreement that we've advanced so far in technology and our understanding of the human mind and human body that here take this magic pill and everything's gonna be fine. Yeah it has some side effects, right? But you know what in the long run it'll be good for you. And I think the problem with that is we're not seeing that to be the case. And we don't necessarily have any information or data to say it would be. I, I, think, I think in that respect, a lot of this is, is really kind of a, 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 a wait and see type of situation about, about how this all occurs. But to your point, though, um, yeah, I think I think can the church do more to maybe kind of uh, ask for these people and help them? Sure, I think that's true. Um, part of that though is maybe how, 
Right. Well, and one of the things I told, uh, I was talking with a friend of mine, and many of her friends are gay, mm -hmm. and I told you, many of mine are. And when you were in the marching business, when I was young, whether it was apartheid, Vietnam, whatever, mm -hmm. those were some of the people. Mm -hmm. And so you make friends, and then you're friends with their friends. Yeah. And like I told you, I've cousins have been divorced a couple times. Uh, most of my uh, gay friends been in wish for 30 mm -hmm. years. So, but anyway, um, I just feel like, oh, another thing Jordan Peterson says in the end is that after they transition back, mm -hmm. they're gay. Very, yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, just because, and I, I read many years ago that they think that the origin of homosexuality has to do with a certain point in pregnancy, a testosterone wall. Maybe. I mean, the, the funny thing is, even with that point, the only real study that's been done was done like in the middle 2000s. There hasn't been any study since. This is before that. Yeah. Well, well, what I'm saying is that the theory about that, but the data that came from that. Yeah. So. So that could have been a theory, but there was no never any data to kind of back that up. What what they what they found though, and this came from a book uh, "Living the Truth and Love" that was produced by Courage. Mm -hmm. um, they found that people experience same attraction there, there. There's a question of whether there's nature or nurture. And that, actually, the, that question is still open. But what they found in some of the data, which wasn't conclusive, but there was a, a good number of people that had similar experiences in their development that kind of they, they so happen to be gay. I mean, cause, correlation is not causation, but it's interesting that a lot of these shared experiences happen. One of which is drug abuse or sexual abuse. Or uh, in the development, um, you have, let's say, uh, let's say a young man who is, uh, there's not a strong male presence in the house. And this man is, this, this young man is raised primarily by women, whether it be mothers or grandmothers, aunts, whatever. That's really their primary uh, development. Even the friends they have surrounding themselves are female. And have not a lot of experience with the male um, um, companion or the presence. Mm -hmm. At certain point in their development, usually around puberty, they have this term they coin said the exotic becomes erotic. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, this novelty of having a lack of this presence. At a certain point where the brain chemistry is now solidifying, it becomes like, oh, well, this I've never experienced this person before. It usually happened here in the locker room 
or something. You see something, oh, well, that one looks different than mine, but also, you know, so it becomes eroticized. And that kind of ingrains itself. Now, again, this is an inconclusive study, but it's, it's kind of fascinating that many people have that same experience. Um, but to that point, I think that's why we say, it is, I think this is also kind of a reason why the wording in the catechism is accurate because it talks about a disorder desire. And, and that's not to say that it's necessarily um, your fault, right? <laughs> so obviously this thing is happening. It's not necessarily your fault you have this attraction or have this thought, but it definitely would not be and that's, it's not correct for its proper end. But you also have to believe that and believe it is the same. Well, hold on, hold, hold on. I'm not, I don't even get out in there yet. Oh. Okay, so what, so I'm just saying, like, just from a developmental standpoint. Yeah, yeah. To have a thought or desire or whatever towards someone with the same sex, or even a thought or desire that I'm not really in the right body, or I'm feeling more this way, that wouldn't necessarily be sinful because there's not, we would, because if there's something wrong, or disordered in the brain chemistry or in the, the, the deliberation or whatever, that wouldn't necessarily be wrong because you're you're not properly ordered in that way already. Mm -hmm. Right? So it wouldn't be sinful necessarily say, you know, I think I'm gay. Okay, well, maybe you are. I mean, all right. You have maybe this desire, but in the same way that I have a desire for a woman, you're so called, you're so called not to act out upon. Well, see, that's what I said to a friend of mine. I said, the bottom line is, she can't do anything. Right. So you know, yeah, I mean, you're so called a chest, you just like anybody else. Yeah, and so, um, but like I, I said before, they feel they're called, called to a location, a partnership, a marriage. But okay, but, but, so, but, so, but so I think we have, to, so we have to be clear what we mean by that because. To say, okay, let's say you have, like you said, your friends who have been together for 30, 40 years. I don't doubt there may be some intimacy there that's actually a deeply rooted spiritual, even emotional or psychological connection. I wouldn't say, okay, you can experience it as, as, as a heterosexual person too. I'm not saying this, I'm not saying that doesn't exist. That's not a marriage. Right. right. Well, another thing that I didn't know until I started listening to some of these podcasts, I didn't know the strength. Um Chastity requirements in a marriage. Yeah, I mean that's another thing too. I mean, people, people think that there's this kind of thought that once if I'm married, anything goes. Well, that's how the church teaches. You. Yeah, but almost nothing goes. Well, what I'm saying is. No, not necessarily. So what, well, what, what, what the teaching of the church would be, and actually Christopher West goes into this very 
pretty well, I think. Um, as long as the action ends, unifying and potentially procreative. Yeah, whatever leads up to that point is it's kind of fair game, right? So if there's some some maybe I don't know if you want to say kink, for lack of a better word, okay. I'm not going to dive into that and jump in your bed and say, hey, don't do that. Whatever. No one's going to do that. No, no, no. But what, what I'm saying is, though, if from an act of the conscience, though, an act of morality would say that the that, that action you're engaging with with your wife is or with your husband is directed for a logical, reasonable end. And that end is unifying in a way designed for you to unify with each other. And also procreative. So any action within that action that would separate those two would be inherently sinful, or I should say immoral. To be sinful, you have to know it and actually do it anyway, right? So, so, but morally speaking, let's say, okay, well, I'm engaged in my wife, but you know, I'm going to strap on a condom. Because I don't want to have a baby. Well, that's negating what the purpose of the action is. You can still be unified with your wife in that way, but even that's more not unified. Because if we're saying that the action of the marital act is a self gift, the gift of the self, I'm selfishly stopping myself from giving myself completely to this person by doing that. Mm -hmm. In the same way, woman, I'm going to pop this pill so that I can control my function, even though that doesn't actually work all the time either. And also could be a way, could also be a means of abortifacients. You don't really, yeah. you don't really some, know for sure. Some are usually just stop the process. Well, the, the problem is even today we don't know. Because the way the pill works in a woman's body is three different ways. Yeah, but right. if the egg is not released, then it's not going to be fertilized. Fair. But what I'm saying is, you never know, though, how the pill actually does what it does. So you could unwittingly be having, you can't actually become more efficient. Well, and you know, that could be happening naturally every month for what you think but, but see, uh, see that's yeah. what I'm saying, but the, 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 the difference is though, I'm willfully doing this. Yeah. Oh, that's that's see. against my body or function, right? So either yeah. way, that's a little different than what we're talking about. But yeah. but, but to that point though, um, that's why that's why you move to the marriage. Marriage still is important, mm -hmm. and regardless of how you get to that end, whatever works. I mean, foreplay, there's always a foreplay fine, 
but the action should still end with that potential for both those aspects, right? Okay. Potential for both those aspects, not necessarily it happens that way, but potential for it, right? And so even with a marriage, yeah. That still has to be in the same way. And why if the Catholic Church has ever contemplated the number of children they have in their schools if Catholics didn't do well, we would know for at least. Well, we would know for at least or be. Well, it depends on what you meant. Everybody in my family has yeah. five kids or nine kids. Uh, I would think. I would think probably we'd be somewhere in the billions over the course of the last fifty years, probably. And um, uh, or at least, I'm sorry, yeah, 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 the method that, that well to be fair that that's so to your point there that yes you're right did not that was that was so NFP when it first developed there was the buildings method which was yeah it was really it was really trying to take a uh, one size fits all yeah and it was not effective, All right? Since then, and this was, now this, to be fair, this was the first development, right? It was kind of the first version. Um, the Marquette method and actually the crate method um, is actually more effective in not achieving pregnancy than most of the contraceptives out there, including condoms and the pill. And that's not even using it perfectly. So I think we're to the point that there is no need to say contraceptives should be used. Well, my, um, well, this was in the, um, rhythm, mm -hmm. uh, years. My cousin got married in seven, and she was 19. And, um, she told the priest they weren't going to have, they weren't going to receive communion at their wedding because she was on birth control. He said, How did that happen? She said, Well, she went to the doctor. <laughs> And the doctor asked what they were going to use before. She's 19 years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, oh, we're Catholic. We're going to use the rhythm method. And he said, well, we have women here in the office who use the rhythm method. And we call them mommy. Yeah. And so she was just terrified. Yeah. So um, the priest told her 
you should be able to configure it. Go to community. Now, he should have told her that, and she relied on it. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think in that respect, her conscious is clear that priest probably has to do with certain things, but. Yeah, no, I, I don't think it's necessarily wrong for her to do that. She was doing it in good conscience and trying to do what she was supposed Very to do. Very close to Prince Bars. I'm going to go see Boris tomorrow. Very, very close to Prince Bars. He was an iron worker. Mm -hmm. And I used to use it for their former kids. And um, had to go out of town. Mm -hmm. And this, you know, this could happen regularly. He and his brother went out of town. And he would come back when he could. And uh, they used to have a communion, and the priest asked why, and she said, when Tom comes home, he needs me. We need to be together. You know, they her raising four kids to live in a town. She said uh, it, it just it's, it's too hard. It's too um, hard on our marriage. Yeah. We can't be together when he can come home. That's understandable. Because, but also, isn't the uh, sexual act is what we used to call it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Before it was the marital. Sure. Um, isn't that the outward side of the segment? Yeah. When the outward side so, of the so engaging they in, were yeah, engaging in the marital life is a recommitment, a re uh, profession of your of your male vow. Yeah. And so when he was able to come home on the weekend, they felt it was Critical to their relationship. And there again, the priest said, Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't really care what they, I don't really care what they felt. My question is, what, so what are you saying that they would engage with contraception when they, when he came home? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. And I guess my, my, my point in that would be, um, okay, well, I can understand that you have this desire for your wife, that's good to have the desire, desire for your husband, that's good to have the desire. And if you're, you're fearing, um, you know, becoming pregnant. Well, they are in four. Fair, but what I'm saying is, um, and that's, and I think that's where the building method kind of failed, yeah. right? Because the building, the building method was really more in science. All it said was, yeah, these three days out of the year, out of the month, don't do anything. Yeah. Well, that doesn't necessarily take into account women's individual cycles because right. that three days can right? right? And that's why the Creighton and the, and the Marquette model are much better because they actually do take into account the individual woman. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, obviously with that respect, I would say that's difficult. Now, 
I would probably advise, I understand how hard this can be, but also chastity, you're called to in chastity even within marriage too. Yeah. And that's, that is extreme sacrifice, I understand that. But, yeah. But that's also awkward, and that's also picking up the cross and follow too. So, yeah, right? I get it. Okay. But even then, like but even then, that would still be matter of confession. That's not yeah. Yeah, so but, yeah, I mean, so I guess that I guess all this to say is that yeah, there's, there has been development of understanding over time, and I think even if I were in that position too back then, you're you're getting this information and whatever, like okay, I mean. Even, even using the pill, so I'm using the pill, like my my sisters, when they were growing up, um, they actually prescribed the pill, but not necessarily for contraceptive, because they were made chastity. used for a lot of things, like for acne, for, you know, well, they also would use it to uh, regulate the cycle, but also for pain. Yeah. And so, to that point, it's like, okay, and so they weren't using it for that end. In that case, they weren't necessarily violating any, any, any issue because they were still maintaining celibacy. So, good. Okay, yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, intention does go a long way. I think what's what's troubling, and I don't know if this is I don't think my sister experience is not very scott, but um I know I've I've talked to so many people who are having uh problems conceiving because of that now. Even though they've been off the pill for quite a while. It, it's it's it turns yeah. Yeah. And so that's another factor that I don't think was necessarily perceived in the very beginning. And even though it was being prescribed, you know and for good reason, that's another fact that wasn't necessarily taken into account. We had an opposite problem. I was traveling all the time for work. And uh, you know, we wanted to have kids, but my job had me gone all the time. So, you know, I had to come back every other. Sometimes it says sometimes God puts these upon us as crosses for us to grow closer to Him too. And so I mean, and that's easier said than done, I think, in many ways. And it's hard to recognize the time, but like I think even in that end, I mean, I mean, there let's look at alternatives here. What else can we do? I mean Okay, well, is, is find another job on the table, and maybe, and maybe in the meantime, you know, we can help you. If we can help you with like you know, our Paul society, or just with like you know maybe a, a 
operation decrease. I wouldn't, as, as a pastor, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that it's out of the realm possibility. You know, if there's something better that can help you to engage better, let's try doing that. Yeah, and you know, I don't know all of their circumstances. This was when there was no tuition. Oh, so that wasn't even a factor. The parish. Yeah. 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 Parish. But, um, yeah, he had work. Mm -hmm. And um, she was working. Also, anyway, um, there are there are circumstances that are so difficult for some yeah, and, but, and even then, I would say, like, you know, that's sort of thing too. You, to communicate to couples too is that chastity is still what you're called to in the circumstance. And because there are legit, legitimate reasons, right? Even within the using NFP, that you would say it's probably good we don't achieve pregnancy in this time. Right? And there are legitimate reasons why that would be. Um but that's that's one of the views of NFP is a lot of us still engage with, with each other and still not achieve pregnancy, right? In a moral kind of way. Um, potential is always there and it should be, but there the and really we even when we talk about contraception, not talking about a complete one hundred percent, you know. This is going to get you through. There's always going to be risk no matter what. But I think what's so fascinating is about these new these new methods that they actually are really equivalent, if not better than a lot of these things. Yeah, and I think the real advantage is that I think people. Especially nowadays, trying to kind of keep in mind is that, you know, especially when we're talking about, you know, environmental and everything aspects, like, well, okay, would you, would you put a bunch of chemicals in your water and start drinking it? Well, no. Well, why are you putting these chemicals in your body? I mean, this is a way to actually, you can actually don't have to do that. Yeah. Uh, it's funny how appealing that actually, especially with this younger generation. They're trying to keep the asses. Right. Right. So, I mean, it's, and then let's say, I mean, I think your point, um, Chris, that, yeah, no one's saying that marriage is easy. No one's saying that any life you live is going to be easy. Um, there's going to be challenges across that God gives us. And that's what I said, yeah. that they're uh, everybody who is single has the same burden. Yeah. You feel it's a burden. Everybody who's clerical has the same burden. Oh, sure. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, to say, like, I don't to say I don't deal with the attraction is a wrong statement. Yeah. That's not yeah. obviously you feel that, but there's there's an understanding that my life is direct for cryptic land. It's an everyday thing, is it is being married. You know, you walk, you, you wake up in the morning and say, I am married, I've chosen this person, I continue to choose the person. And the same way. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And there's some days you do. Yeah, you're right. There's some days you don't want to. Yeah. It's, uh, so much, so much. Oh, when you're 71, 
Hey, thank you for the discussion. I mean, we've been here almost two and a half hours, so maybe it's time to go. Actually, it was three hours. So, um, thank you guys. That's right. Um, just, just, yeah, yeah, this. So just to be, uh, so next week for sure we're not going to meet because I'm going on vacation. Um, but um, we're going to try. Questions. Give me a give me a call. Sorry. Um. So, but for future for future reference, I we're going to have to discern if this is going to continue in the future. So we're gonna probably go on a little bit of a hiatus until we get that figured out. I probably need some. I mean, I would imagine when I get back from vacation, it's interesting that August first is that next Tuesday. So we typically have friends, food, and faith that night. Um, and I'm, I'm I can still plan to do that. It's the same old box and cheeses that nobody gets into, and I think about the rest of the night. Well, you know, anyone can bring everything they want. It's a hard it's style. I, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm buying some food. I have mean, no idea that people can bring their life to share. I'm gonna need to cheese it. But, but right now, I'm planning to have friends in faith on August 1st, but we may have to reassess this time, but especially when school starts. Yeah, uh, so um, just stay tuned. We'll, we'll keep it going as long as we can. We'll have to maybe reassess when that, when that occurs. So, yeah. yeah, I wish, I wish there were more people. Well, you know, it's funny. I think we get a lot of people watching online too, and I'm pretty sure of that. Um, but we can, we'll have to, we'll have to look at the future. Too. There might be a better night. There might be a different night. We'll have to just figure that out. Next. The next appointment as well is on Wednesday. Okay. They always have it on Tuesday. That's true. They try to muscle me out. I get it. Well, 